Next we're going to look at how to build a table in LaTeX. To start a table we use the command backslash begin tabular. And notice um, a couple of things. After tabular we have another set of curly braces and it's looking for us to insert some kind of argument there. And then we also have a matching end tag, end tabular. So begin tabular uh, to start our table and end tabular to indicate that we are finished with the table. Now in this second set of curly brackets we have to indicate how many columns we want in our table. And we're not going to type a number, we're actually going to indicate whether we want our entries centered or left justified or right justified. I want my entries centered so I'm going to type a C and this would give me a table with one column. If I type another C I'm going to get a table with two columns. Let's make a table with six columns. So I'm going to type six C's and that means in each of those columns the entries are going to be centered. Now as I type my entries when I want to move into the next column I use an ampersand. Let's put an X in our first column and I'm going to put that in math mode. Let's just type X. And then in my um, next columns I want to type the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So X is in my first column. Now to move to the second column I use the ampersand. Then I type the next entry which is a 1. Then an ampersand, 2, ampersand, 3, ampersand, 4, ampersand, 5. Now the spaces I'm typing in the code aren't going to show up as spaces in the document. It just helps me to kind of organize the code as I'm writing it. You can insert spaces. You can see that I did that up here just to kind of separate the code for the fraction. That absolutely has no effect on the output. It's not going to insert spaces in the output. It just helps me um, visually to organize the code. So now I have my six columns. X, one, two, three, four, and five. When we want to go to the next row, we have to type two backslashes. This forces a line break and takes me to the next row of my table. So in the next row, instead of an X in the first column, I want F of X. And uh, since that's not a tall object, I don't need to use expanded parentheses. And then I'll fill in uh, values for the rest of the columns in that second row. So let's do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now let's build our document and take a look at our table. Now our entries are all nicely aligned, but it doesn't really look like a table. It would look better if I had some lines separating my rows and columns. Let's see how we can accomplish that. The command backslash hline will insert a horizontal line and where I've placed it it's going to insert a horizontal line after the first row and before the second row. So if we build that then we have this nice um, separator. If I want vertical lines separating my columns then I have to come up here where I've defined my columns and use the uh, pipe key on the keyboard and that should insert a vertical bar. Now it's looking more like a table. And if I wanted to, I could insert vertical bars in between each of the columns. If I wanted a border around the table, I could go back where I've defined my columns and put a ver vertical bar before the first column. After the second column, I can include a horizontal line before the first row, end the second row, and then put a horizontal line after the second row. And then our table appears to have a border around it. 
Finally, we're going to take a look at how to make an equation array. Arrays are very useful when you want to line objects up at a certain location. And we often do this when we're showing our steps in solving an equation. We want everything to be lined up at the equal sign. So to begin with, we're going to use the symbol backslash begin and then for equation it's abbreviated EQN and we see this um, recommending the rest of the code for us begin equation array and then we have a matching end equation array command when we use equation array we're automatically in math mode so it's not necessary to type dollar symbols we're automatically in math mode so we'll begin our array with the equation 5x squared minus 9 is equal to x plus 3. To move on to the next line, I'm going to use double backslash. And my next step is going to be 4x squared equals 12. Again, to end that line and move to the next line, double backslash, and then we have x squared equals 3. And we have x is approximately, I don't want to use an equal symbol here, um, I want to say approximately, so the code for the approximately symbol is backslash approx, x is approximately and then I want the plus or minus symbol, that's backslash PM and the value 1.732. So let's see what happens when we try and build this. Okay, we have all of our equations, but notice they're not all lined up vertically at the equal sign. They're all justified right, which is not what I want. Also, as I scroll over to the right, I see that these equations, each of the lines, are numbered. When you're working in, in an array, um, by default it's automatically going to give you line numbers, which is useful uh, for reference if you're writing a paper and you have to refer to a certain step in your problem. The first thing I want to change about this is I want all of these things to line up at the equal sign. So we're going to go back into the code and we're going to wrap the equal sign character with ampersands. So one in front and one after. And that's going to tell the compiler that we want to align these equations with that symbol. And I'll do the same for my approximately equal to symbol. Okay, and we'll build. Now those are all lined up at the equal signs. If I don't like the line numbering and I want to hide that, that's very easy to do. We just go into the command begin equation array and then also the end equation array. And after the equation array, after that Y there, we're going to type an asterisk. So we'll do that in the opening command and the closing command. And now when I build, it has hidden those line numbers from view. So that wraps up our tutorial on bracketing symbols, tables, and arrays.